our first presenter is uh, Johnny Laser. He's a multimedia artist who has no clue what he's doing, yet it seems to work out every time. And let me see, I'll get, I'll queue up the first image. Oh, there we go. Now, this is a nice, friendly group of officers. And that would be, uh, see, the building behind those officers. This is, near, this is Washington. This is right across the street from a place called Washington Square Park in New York City. So these are all the, that, that abode behind the, the, uh, the gendarmes. Uh, belonged to Thomas Jefferson, and he hung out there smoking joints on the front. No, only kidding. I have no idea who lived there, but somebody who was fancy had to live there because Washington Square Park was a fancy place at one time, and NYU is right down the block. Now, what would these fine examples of civil discipline be doing? They are watching out for the pillow fight event, which occurred sometime, I think it was like 2013 or something. Uh, it's a yearly event, and people come to Washington Square Park, that the big uh, arch in the right hand, the, the far right of that image is uh, the Washington Square mon yeah, Monument there. And uh, people all come to that park and they bring pillows and they pound each other with them. It's quite fun, quite a very interesting event actually. Dave Camo was there and uh, a few of them, Jamie, um, our, uh, Jamie Smith, our uh, archivist and vice president and an otherwise very nice guy. We all went there and shot some really interesting images. He actually shot a video of it. It was quite, quite a fun thing. But it happens every year. I think it happened this year. I wonder why. Let's see. Oh, and on the way from that great event, I found myself stuck in traffic. As we could see, there's traffic on both sides. And I, and I watch this thing pass, around, pass by in New York quite frequently. It's actually, you can't see it from the sides, but you can just about see it. There are plexiglass panels on the, on the left and the right side of it. So you can see as you're driving by, and this is just an advertisement. This guy drives it around all day long at oldgoodthings.com. And uh, for once, I got stuck behind it. Actually, I think I had to move myself into that position because I saw it was such a good shot. And I got out of the car. And that's why it actually works. You don't see any staining from the, uh, from the windshield because I got out and shot it. I'm used to having horns honked at me, so I don't think much about that. But uh, yes, indeed, that was uh, that might uh, I guess that, that was, that's a uh, thing. Again, that was like through 2013. Of course, a W3, the old trusty. And this was uh, another event we did. This was an NYSA outing, uh, which was a, a kite festival. And this is, that's the Hudson River, you know, the river on the side. It's the west side of Manhattan. And interestingly enough, in the near distance is uh, the Trump buildings. When, and that was back when he was, when, our, our, our illustrious leader was just a real estate guy from uh, Queens. But that used to be all railroads over there. So this is that, that elevated piece of a highway you see right there is uh, the West Side Highway. And a grand time was had by all that day. So that, I'm going to make that very brief. And those are my images. And wait a minute. Oh, actually, Johnny Lazers. And I'll, wait a second. That's for Johnny. Now on to uh, our next presenter, if he's here. Gordon, did you make it? As I right. was, oh, there you go, man. Cool. You're, you're muted. Yes, oh. yes, indeed. Gotcha. Sorry about that. No, no problem. No problem. I, hey, I'm, Gordon. There I am. Now, uh, yeah, yeah, no problem at all. I mean, that, that's, that's, that's your, your, your playing by the rules, man. I like that. Well, a, a quick, uh, quick biography of, of Gordon. First dabble in 3D in, in elementary school with an interest in auto stereograms. Um, great, great guy. He's a great presenter. If you go back and look at the uh, at, at our archival stuff on Vimeo, you will see he's, he's done some really interesting stuff. And there'll be more details about his bio there, but, he's a, but I'll just cut to the chase with one last sentence, which is a, a gifted musician and active member of the NYSA and brings a very clever and creative approach to 3D imagery. I'm sorry he does the same thing with his music. Let me cue his images up. Ah, oh, there we go. And these were for, again, this was for uh, the My Town 
where, where is this? Where, where is, was this shot? So this is right in my, uh, my neighborhood, which is a historic district, district of Prospect Park South in Brooklyn. It was, uh, it was part of what was at the time, I think in the late 20s, this, uh, what was a, a new project in basically bringing more park spaces into suburban areas. So that's just a little strip that's in the, in the middle of the street uh, near us. What, what, Nothing, what, did, what uh, yeah. did you shoot? Sorry, what, what did you shoot with? This is just on an iPhone, an old iPhone like SE or something, this uh, reasonably sized thing that still fits in my pocket, which is why I use it. And uh, nothing that, and this is just a sequential stereo, of course. Um, nothing too special about this, but of course, John Z did point out um, when he saw this earlier that I've used some of the, some diagonal cropping. And I think also, yeah, a little bit of asymmetrical framing here. Um, it's just great the way that the foreground pops out. If anyone has, you know, take a close look at that. It's really phenomenal. Uh, it's a nice touch. It really is an amazing touch. Uh, it makes that come alive in 3D. In 2D, it's not a bad shot, but in 3D, it really just comes alive. It's a simple image. It's a, a wonderful image. When, uh, when did you shoot it anyway? What, what time frame? Oh, this is, um, this one, I'd have to look that up. I, I would guess, <laughs> I call I guess <laughs> maybe late, maybe late April, I think. Uh, Excellent. Okay. Oh, I got you. That, that's a very rare occurrence. I got him. Good. I'm going to mark that down. <laughs> and I'll also add that, you know, the uh, using the diagonal uh, cropping allowed me here to place the stereo frame like at the level of that of that tree in the foreground. So if I hadn't done that, there'd be a lot more ghosting on that tree in the anaglyph version. Looks great. And now this, I believe, is from February. This is this is really too dark as an anaglyph, but uh, the same tree, the same median in the neighborhood, just so, showing some seasonal differences there. And again, the same neighborhood, but uh, another tree, and again with some of that, some of that non-traditional framing there. Well, you know, I I always like your work, and now we're going to get onto something really. I can't even. I don't. I. I think I pronounce catadioptronic. I can't. I think I can only say it once, three times yeah. a day, and I'm. I hit my level. I, I'm done. I, my budget for saying that word. What is it again? Say it again. I mean, catadioptric is how I've been saying it, but I Good. have no. I've never heard it pronounced uh, by anyone with authority. I, I don't have the authority, so. Well, good, and I, I feel much better and in, in completely incompetent in saying it. Um, you, you can. Now we're going to get into something that's very interesting. So now I'm going to hand over that you can actually I think you could take the screen or could I or do I have to stop sharing hold on uh and you have to stop first yeah okay give me one second here okay are you all seeing that yeah okay Got it. great so um Thank you, John and, and David and everyone else. And, and I'll also add to the, to the greetings earlier that happy belated Juneteenth to, uh, to everyone too. So if you, if you were here for a meeting a few weeks ago, um, I think it was the slideshow theme of beauty. I, a picture I shared was, was one of a woman reflected in glass. And, uh, and this is the same idea. This is maybe, maybe another female, uh, I'm not sure. But this is just a stock photo, and this is 2D, of course, of a moth reflected on glass. But the interesting thing is uh, with this one, as with that earlier photo, is the reflection of the moth here actually provides a, a stereo mate for creating a pair with the direct image of the moth. And it just works that way because of the, of the angle uh, of the, the camera view and you know, related to the mirror and the subject in this stock photo. It's kind of a lucky find. Um, so essentially, if you duplicate this photo, uh, flip it horizontally, and then place it side by side, you get this. And on the left here, this is, is the anaglyph, and then on the right is the three panel kind of universal stereo pair view. But as you can see, it's, it, it gives quite a nice 3D picture of this, of this moth. And again, it's, it was just a fortuitous find. And that was just stock photo on the internet that you found? It is, yeah. Excellent. And I, I did a lot of exploring to find uh, various photos. You can, I'll post my, 
Instagram later if you want to check out more of more of those mirror stereos. But but how this works to get slightly technical temporarily. Uh, so this is a simplified diagram where basically the angles and the distances are all exaggerated uh, for clarity. But but as you can see here, using a mirror this way basically gives you two different views of the subject and from a, from a slightly different angle. The two views you get are equivalent to, to walking around the subject and, and basically taking it from a different angle. Here is, uh, again, a, an illustration of that, right? It's equivalent to if you had moved your camera to the left there. Um, but, you'll, but you may notice two details here, and one is that, um, well, well, because of the angle difference, basically you get some keystoning, aka you get some distortion uh, between, between the two pictures because of like the yaw movements that you're making. And that can be corrected to some extent um, with using like Stereo Photo Maker, the auto align feature. Um, but of course that works best when that angular difference is very slight. So when the camera in this case is almost, where the view of the camera is almost parallel to the mirror. And then the second thing you might notice is the path, um, the path of the reflected image to get to the subject is a little bit longer than the direct path. And so because of that, you sometimes have, uh, you sometimes have little differences in focus and, uh, and a slight difference in magnification sometimes. So those are also things uh, you can correct. Um, but what I'd like to talk about more today is for these catadioptric stereos, it's essentially starting with this scenario, but then asking what happens if you switch the subject and the camera position. So instead you have the mirror, you bring the mirror right up to the camera instead of at the subject. And does that still work? And the answer is, is yes, it does. Um, here is what that physically looks like. So this is, this is just me shooting into a, like a bathroom mirror, but what I'm holding there is just a, about a four by four inch a uh, small mirror I got off of uh, Amazon or somewhere. I'll I'll uh, post about that later too. But I'm just holding it up to the phone, up to the phone lens, uh, nearly perpendicularly, but with a slight, uh, but with a slight inward angle. And this is how that works. Again, simply and exaggerated. Uh, on the left there. I'm just showing basically the, the, you know, the example field of view of the camera and just arbitrarily coloring the left half of the view blue, the right half yellow. And on the right, that's, that's where your mirror is placed. So it's reflecting the left half of your view onto the right half of the scene. And then that area in green there basically represents uh, what you see for which, um, it, yeah, represents uh, area for which you have basically two different views and hence you have stereo information for that uh, for that segment of your view. Um, and I wanted to show, uh, let's see, John and David suggested I, I do this at the meeting earlier. If you all can switch to a view where you can see me on the camera, at least temporarily, uh, and I'll, I'll keep screen sharing, but I'll show you what what this method looks like from the point of view of the of the photographer. So here's an example. Uh, mirror. This is just a three by five uh, acrylic, uh, supposedly unbreakable mirror that uh, that I got off of Amazon, I believe. But if if you were looking at me through my through my laptop camera here and trying to take one of these photos, this is what it would look like. So I'm bringing the mirror up and trying not to scratch my camera lens, and basically I'm trying to find the right the right angle and position for myself so that you would see, you know, both me and my reflection, and, and they would about be half and half in the field of view. So this is not perfect, but, but as you might guess, a lot of this process is trying to fool around with the position of the mirror and the correct angle. And it certainly took me a lot of practice to, uh, to get that. Um, but if I go back to now that, that previous picture I showed you, here's exactly what the camera saw. So this again is, is not 3D first, in, at, for the time being. Um, but uh, the left half is the reflection in the mirror, the right half is the direct view. And if you just edit this by, by reversing horizontally the left half, then you get this. And this is already a parallel stereo pair. Um, I know this is a little bit large to view. 
but uh, you might notice that there are some some problems with this if you're picky, like the like the right image is a little bit larger. And then again, there's that, that keystone, that yaw distortion that I mentioned before. If you clean this up, and, and the easiest way to do it, what I've been doing is using, uh, you know, Masuji Suto's great stereo, stereo photo maker and the auto align feature. You know, if you do that and some cropping and processing, then you get that image, which I showed you before. So now I wanted to show you uh, a little bit of the process of me uh, experimenting with these. This is one of the earliest pictures I took um, with, you know, trying out this method. And there are some issues with this uh, picture, as you see, like on the left, there's this weird distortion, like this curving forward of the image. And then the angle and the depth are not, are not super. And then if you look at the stereo pair, you can see that, uh, that one of the images is a lot blurrier than the other. And, you know, part of this is due to, again, not having the right position and angle of the mirror. Uh, and then also due to some of those things I talked about before, like the different distances. So not great. Another issue is, and again, this is 2D, this is just the raw picture, is when I try to take macro with this method, you can see this is ruined by basically the double reflection from the mirror. So this, this issue is, uh, stems from the fact that most you know, ordinary mirrors, like your bathroom mirror or whatnot, are, are what, I don't know if there's a term, maybe like rear surface mirror, but basically like it's a, it's a substrate, right? So glass or plastic. And then underneath that is the actual silvered layer uh, of metal that, that produces the main reflection, right? But if you get up really close to these mirrors, then you get a secondary reflection from the top of the, the substrate surface. So if you get up close to your bathroom mirror, you know, you'll, you'll see that double reflection, which is normally not a problem at any you know, practical distance, but again, it you know, ruins the macro. So, uh, so what you need is something called a first surface or a front surface mirror. And for those of you who have done optics and lasers and stuff, you know that that's, that's what you need. And that avoids the, that double reflection problem. Here is, here's what happened when I, when I upgraded to a first surface mirror of about the same size and, uh, and tried a similar macro shot again. So now, of course, it's that double reflection is not a problem and, uh, you know, worked out, works out pretty well, I thought. And here, here is a closer look at this same shot and someone can let me know if I'm moving too quickly, but uh, here's just a zoomed in look, that same shot. And I think the details, Good piece. Good piece. okay, great, thanks. I think the details here are, are really, you know, turned out really nicely. And part of that is, is because, you know, this method you're taking a pair in a single shot. And so it eliminates a lot of the variables uh, like different lighting between two shots or, um, or the white balance, you know, exposure, things moving. Um, there are fewer variables with this than than with the sequential method. And, and especially, you know, if you're trying to take the, a cha-cha picture up really close for a macro, there are so many things that can, that can go wrong, but it, it simplifies a lot of them to, to use this mirror method. Another advantage, of course, of taking the stereo pair in a single shot is you can shoot things that are moving, right? So this is an, a so-called allate ant queen. It's a, it's a newly, uh, it's a new ant queen who has just completed presumably her nuptial flight in which she mated. Uh, and I was just out uh, basically fooling around with taking mirror stereos uh, of flowers when this, when this queen ant just flew into my leg and then dropped to the ground beside me. So it was a fortuitous chance to take these shots. Um, but yeah, she's, uh, she's about an inch long. And again, uh, you know, she was on the move, so I wouldn't have been able to take these pictures in, in my normal sequential method. Here is an example of, uh, of an uncropped shot I took of the Ant Queen. And uh, if you look in the upper right hand corner, you can see a tiny little soldier ant. And uh, this is a bit, a bit of an aside, but what I, was, what I was wanting to do with editing this picture is crop it in a rectangle such that the two ants were in opposite corners. Um, but you notice that, that this stereo is quite tilted, right? Um, 
But if you were here a couple, I think a couple meetings ago, I did a little short presentation on asymmetric framing of stereo pairs. And at the end, I talked about how you could use some of those same techniques to essentially tilt a, uh, tilt a 3D, tilt a picture like in 3D space. And of course, last week with uh, Jim McManus's fantastic presentation, he talked about some of the same techniques as far as using them for depth maps and things. So if you use some of those concepts, um, here's, here's what I was able to do uh, from that first one, basically crop it like I wanted and flatten it. Although it's, uh, although the, the ant queen does look a little bit tilted in a strange way, but, uh, but you know, anyway, proof of concept, pretty good for that. And here's just another shot of, of that same ant queen. This is after she tore her own wings off her back because after that flight, she doesn't need them anymore. And the next step for her is uh, digging a burrow, uh, starting to lay eggs, founding her colony, et cetera. And here are just a couple final uh, example photos using this method. This is a uh, meadow evening primrose. And of course, if you see that thing that looks like it might be like a dead pine needle or something on it from far away, if you look, if you look more closely, that is this little fella, which is a, uh, a red and blue leafhopper, AKA a candy striped leafhopper or red banded leafhopper, probably other made up names. And uh, you'll have to forgive the, uh, the weird framing issues uh, with this, but I wanted to just zoom in to show you, you know, the nice detail on the focus. And again, this was a subject that was on the move, so I wouldn't have been able to take this uh, another way. And now these are, these are just anaglyphs first, but this is, now this is a, some species of katydid nymph on the same flowers and uh, probably eating the nectar from the stigma of the flower here. And here is that as stereo pairs, the first shot here. And I'm also using asymmetric framing here. And then here is the second shot a little bit closer. Yeah, but, uh, but that's it. So, you know, it's very, it's very interesting to fool around and experiment with this method and you can do it, uh, you can do it with any, you can start doing it with any cheap mirror like I did. You know, this one easily, easily findable on eBay or Amazon. And, you know, with, with any camera, even a pretty, even a pretty run of the mill uh, camera phone like I did. And, you know, there are many advantages over, over the sequential method, although it does take a lot of, experimenting to uh, you know get the right mirror position angle and so forth. I'll post a link in the chats um, to uh, let's see so there's one technical paper I've referenced a lot a great optics paper on uh, on these uh, catadioptric stereos and that's and that's where I picked up the term by the way catadioptric technically just refers to an optical system which uses a combination of reflection and refraction so here that's the mirror and the camera lens, although you could also use a prism or something to, uh, to get the refraction. And, and there's also a great gallery by Donald Simanic, I'm not sure how to pronounce his last name, sorry, um, who's done some, some, uh, some home-built uh, rigs for like holding a mirror in front of the camera. And he's also experimented with uh, different configurations using multiple mirrors and things like that. So that's a, it's a great website and I'll post that in a second. Uh, so thank you all. Well, that was fantastic. Again, really, really uh, illuminating. No pun intended. Okay. Now, yo, it was fantastic. Uh, some people had a hard time. I guess they weren't able to see that demo you did on the screen. Is there, is, could, could you oh, do that one more time? Yeah, yeah. When you yeah. held the, 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 the mirror up. Yeah, without... give me a second. Okay, oh, so sure. I've stopped sharing. So if you want to spotlight me or something, then people could see that real quick. Yeah, anyone who's in speaker view, hopefully will be seeing you if I shut up. I, I see. Yeah, that's right. I just want to be sure because I saw a yeah. couple of things come by. Okay, so this is very, oh no, this is hard to do because I, hold on, I need to be in speaker view so I see myself do this. Okay, so well, it's. Don't, yeah, don't break anything on yourself over there. I'm just, yeah, trying not to scratch. Scratch, no, I'll scratch. That wouldn't be good. Too. So yeah, so essentially, you know, it's going to look like, something like this, right? And as you can see, this is a little out of focus. This is the, this is the ordinary mirror. 
but this is what you know what you would aim to capture basically having the uh, having the screen having the mirror be roughly in the center of your screen although that that will depend on what size of mirror you're using and and the specifics of your camera but but that's the basic idea but you can see as you're taking these with a smartphone you're you're able to monitor how you're doing in other words you're seeing the the reflected stereo pair as you go so you yeah have, and that's nice that helps a lot right so now you're are you doing with the accuracy of your mirror framing and all that? Mm -hmm. Where do you get your front surface mirrors? There have been people kind of asking about uh, mirror options. Do you have a recommended source for them? Just go on eBay or? Uh, yeah, so if you, if you search on eBay or Amazon for front surface mirror or also first surface mirror, um, those are both, those are both terms. Um, on eBay especially, you'll find a lot of those listed also as like laser mirrors. And, and of course, John Z would know more about this. And so I'll, talk, I'll talk to Johnny Laser when I see him, and I'll ask him to answer those questions. Oh, yes, right, of course. Of course. And, and Stereo Photomaker is able to correct that you do get some keystoning distortion because of, in effect, it's almost like you're towing in. Right, exactly. But, but Stereo Photomaker, you're able to just use auto align and um, clear, that, clear that up pretty much. Yeah, the, and, and I, think it, I think it does really well, at least with the, uh, with like the, the photos I've taken and, and the distances I've used. Good That's question. The best. Do you recommend us? What, what do you find to be the effective distances? You seem to have a variety of. Does the way you angle the mirror change what the stereo, the, the ideal distance from camera to subject is? Uh, yeah. Yes, it does. But basically, I, I what I've worked out is with the with the first surface mirror I was using. I um, again, it was dependent on. It's dependent on you know, my camera lens and the mirror size. But basically, I had, um, basically, I would shoot from subjects, I would have the end of the mirror, mm. basically right at the subject. Um, so I'm shooting, so I'd be shooting from a little more than in this case, uh, what is this five, a little, a little further than five inches away from the subject. And that, and that worked out as, as far as the combination of the angle of the mirror Again, the length of the mirror, and then the amount of depth that I wanted to get in those photos. But but you can you could tweak all those things. Andrew Hurst has a great tip for everyone on chat. Uh, you can get uh, you know secondhand, very cheap Polaroid cameras. They have nice front surface mirrors into them. So you you see a Polaroid camera at a garage sale or something for fifty cents, there there might be some gold in there. Nice. Uh, yeah. Pick on all those Polaroid cameras, you know. How would you like if someone peeled a stereo realist apart from there? You know what I mean? Oh, it happens all the time. It happens all. Don't tell anybody how much aluminum is in them. Fortunately, the price of aluminum is down. But I, what, anyway, I think those cameras will disappear if the price of aluminum goes up. That'll be the last you'll see of those things. But anyway, that was again very uh, fantastic. It's a, it's an interesting take on uh, uh, and and it's a wonderful way to experiment. It's a great entry position to to 3D if you want to. Play with it. If you know a lot about 3D, then man, this is this could be just a fun thing to play with and uh, incredible. Uh, and, and that was wonderful. We, that was, you really are a great communicator. That was uh, that was fantastic. And of course, and this is like you know, you've got this a million times already. But thank you, thank you once again. Really appreciate that. Uh, and and you're, you're going to stick around till later, till uh, Dave and Jim. Or, or taken over, right? I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure people are going to really want to uh, have several questions for you. All right, we muted him, and uh, also uh, we have a couple people like Susan and David said there's they can show a screen share of uh, this this original like 1903 book with multiple mirrors. So we have more more fun after the meeting. Yeah, yeah. Well, the, hey, you know what? I may even stick around. No, I'm only kidding. I know. I know what I've outstayed my welcome. <laughs> anyway. Uh, um, just briefly, now we're going to get on to the fun stuff. Now the fun, that was fun. Not to say that wasn't fun. But we're going to get on to other fun stuff. Uh, let me just give you a quick bio of everybody who's, who participated or is going to be participating in, in, the, um, in the Coney Island Mermaid Parade. Uh, of course, there's Sheldon Aronowitz, uh, who's gone to 36 NSA meetings. Uh, he's produced several sets of Viewmaster reels and slides, and he's the treasurer of the NYSA. And to know Sheldon is to love Sheldon. So that's the that's that best bio I can give. If you don't know him, you're missing out. Uh, and a Jim Harp, you know, NYSA board member. Harp's travels through his professional theater as a musician and consultant that brought him to places far and wide. Uh, his images are 
are excellent and he he does the mosaics for us and and he, without he him and uh, dave none of this would be possible so it's, it's going to be fun to uh to go to the uh to go to the parade with jim <laughs> and bruce stevens who's also an nysa member uh, i'll give you a little bit of background on him he, he he actually ran into uh when he's in college he ran into an old issue of american cinematographer which is all about 3d and then he purchased an old stereo realist and with, and started shooting slides and with the, and then started even using with a single camera the cha cha which everybody kind of works their way through if you haven't done that it's really a, a, an a interesting approach to 3D. He's he and he produces he's very generous and produces a uh, annual 3D anaglyphic calendar anaglyphic. That's the second time I'll be and I'm probably not going to get to say that word again. But 3D, I'll try one more time, folks. I'm taking the hill. 3D anaglyphic calendar for the past eight years, featuring his numerous uh, worldwide travels across Europe. South America, Africa, and India. And if you show up at our uh, our yearly party, you may be lucky enough to get one bestowed upon you, like I am. And it will someday be. I, you know, I, I never thought of getting an autograph. Next time, I'm going to bring them all in and get them autographs. Uh, and um, last but not least, thank you for for participating and, and doing so much that you uh, all the things you do for, for our normal meetings. And the the last uh, one will be Jay Kuznets, who worked in commercial photo labs through, uh, through 2001. Uh, and and, he, and of course, of all things, he spent nights, and he's gonna he's gonna feel right at home in the in the parade. He spent nights in the late '80s as a stripper, but actually, he was a photo stripper. So, which does that mean you get photographed and get and strip? Or ha no? It does. Obviously, the people Come know. Explain what that effects. is for a minute, so I have embarrassed you thoroughly. So go ahead. Oh, uh, it's just taking multiple pictures and combining them, doing what Photoshop did, but manually. That that takes that out of it. Um, although that's really fascinating, and of course, your 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 um, understanding how all that works helps make great photographs. Knowing knowing the whole process from end to end. Uh, his love of stereography was reunited when he bumped into a W three. Like many folks, all of a sudden you had the digital world in front of you. Uh, he's shot the Make Affair, also done weddings, sci fi cons. We, we, I can't wait to see more of his images and other another events we do on other shows. Um, and he, he, during the rehearsals, he was able to show us all the rigs he shoots with, really fascinating stuff. Built some really interesting things. And now, without further ado, I'm sure you'll be happy to finally lose my picture. Let's see if we can get this going, and we're gonna share. And again, what we're gonna do is it's gonna be like being at the parade, as close as we can get it, because there isn't one, there ain't one today. If anyone has a corn dog, please uh, cook it up now. Yes. <laughs> So we're starting in the staging area. This is a picture you took, right, Jay? Yes. Love the 3D glasses. Um, yeah, I had bought a bunch of 3D glasses to give out to people who I was shooting. So oh, that, that is interesting. Now, now, uh, uh, what's in the background? I mean, not everybody knows that. Uh, that's a cyclone roller coaster. Um, I always try to keep some iconic uh, buildings, the lights in the background of my pictures. Um, and well, do you know approximately what year this might have been? Uh, probably 2012. You're starting to have a little audio funkiness, but that's but we're going to keep moving on. Stand by. Actually, this slide's all right. So, this is one I took last year. Uh, I was using the uh, Insta360 Evo, so it's a 180, a VR180 camera, and here I've I've gone with the rectilinear and just tried to make it into a wide-angle shot. But uh, most of my fun at, at the Mermaid Parade is hanging out at the staging area a couple hours before the parade starts. Usually by the time the parade is actually going, I'm exhausted and all my batteries are run out, and I often just leave. <laughs> it's the morning. It's, for me, that's where I get all, have all my fun, is just as people are getting ready for the parade. And uh, these people all want to have photographs taken, right? That's what's so great about it. Yeah, I've never had never had anyone. I don't know about anyone else. They're always yeah very eager. That's why they're there. It's photographer's paradise. And uh, does anybody you could chime in a little bit about the history of this of this uh, of the Coney Island Mermaid Parade? I know it began in '83. Well, Sheldon, I could, all I could say is uh, they get about fifteen hundred participants every year. And it's the largest art parade in the world. 
Um, the staging area, about, I would say, two or 300 of the participants come to the staging area. But uh, the rest you'll find in the parade itself. And it's been 36 years so far and going strong. Who shot uh, this one? Uh, this is one of my images. And uh, the costumes are just so colorful and amazing. It's like you'll never see more color than at the Mermaid Parade. And uh, there's just an endless amount of unbelievable images you could take and look at the others. So this is just one I found colorful and artsy and interesting in the staging area. And the, uh, the way they, they uh, explain the parade is that the first Saturday before the solstice, all the mermaids of Coney Island emerge from the ocean for one day to welcome summer. So that's technically what you're seeing is Coney Island mermaids come to shore just for this one magical day. This is, this is you, right, Bruce? Yes, yes. Um, actually, I, I shot these in uh, 2016, and uh, uh, my girlfriend and I got there a little bit later than we'd hoped to, and... Uh, the, uh, the weather was getting very threatening and it was starting to rumble and uh, we stopped this little shop just outside of um, just outside of the location and bought a uh, beach umbrella, a really huge one because we needed it for the beach. It was really huge. And <clears throat> as we made our way in, it started to pour like just, it was like Armageddon. It was really a, a biblical downpour, really huge and people just ran and scrambled under under this overhang which then opened up into the parade area everybody got out of the way all these people had most you know a good number of them had had a fantastic vantage point a fantastic location very close by uh and it just poured and poured and poured but as it was starting to let up just a little bit we uh opened up this huge beach umbrella made our way to the, the front of the, uh, the police line barrier. And uh, we had a fabulous location right in the front row. And we kind of sat there, hunkered down underneath this umbrella and waited for things to uh, was clear up a bit and the parade began and there we were, uh, you know, the, in fabulous, fabulous location. Uh, I can't you imagine. Have to get the, you have to wait six hours to get a spot like that on a normal year. Like you yeah. can't just walk up and get a nice view of the parade. Absolutely, absolutely. No, it was uh, it was quite miraculous. And I've you, never even tried, honestly. I just go to the staging area. I never even tried to get a good good vantage point from the actual parade. Right, right. Anyway, so there'll be there'll be more of mine coming up. But uh, anyway, as you can see, yeah. ground's wet and lots of umbrellas still out, but. Uh, we uh, we got a great we got a great location, and that's the famous Nathan's in the background over there. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Got to have a hot dog, and and what's a little rain? You know, mermaid. It's not gonna bother a mermaid. Did a lot of the crowd disappear, dissipate, or did some people come back? How, how it looks like a looks like a fair amount of people showed back up, found themselves on umbrellas. Yeah, everybody, everybody came. Everybody came back. Everybody came back, but uh, we they didn't have they didn't have this they didn't have the vantage point that we did. Rub it in, will you, there, Bruce? Good. Yeah, it was a, it was a good break, lucky break. Now, who shot this one? That's Sheldon, right? The staging area. Where are we? At? It's still the same. Oh, there it is. Yes, that's me. Uh, again, that's you. Is... Hey, you look good, Dre. You, you dress up good, Sheldon. <laughs> that's me and drag. <laughs> yeah, wow, well, man, look at you. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, uh, these, nice set of hips. The people here are just so creative with their costumes. It's just amazing, and a lot of them come to the staging area all ready to go. Others uh, get ready in the staging area. So it's enjoyable just to watch them get their costumes together. And it's, uh, you can take pictures of that. They love to pose with you and for you. And there's just the staging area. It used to be $5 way back. And then it went up to 10 to 20. Now it's $40 to get I think it was 75. Well, yeah, it's I remember. I was film shooting digital. But uh, yes, yeah, if you have a press pass, it's free. Otherwise, it's forty dollars now. But very, the forty dollars well spent. Forty dollars, and uh, this is the staging area again. And uh, it's it starts about two or three hours prior to the parade, the staging area. So you have plenty of time to take many, many images. So this is just one interesting one I found. How many? How many photographers show up for the staging area? You oh get God! A lot of uh, yeah, okay. no, hundreds, hundreds, hundreds. I love taking pictures of the photographers. When you'll see 
a participant, you may see 30 or 40 photographers gathered around a participant, which makes for very interesting photos also. And you'll see things so, like uh, yeah, cameras, you'll see old press, old press film cameras, you'll see uh, panoramic. It, it, it's, it's the one event where I could bring the TL120 and not stand out because of my strange camera. So let me break. Right. That's one of yours, Jake. Uh, just, you know, uh, with mine, just getting the roller coaster in the background. Um, also, I think 2013. Now, does it start, Nathan? Where does it actually begin? Does anybody know? Oh. What was the question? Uh, the question is, where does it begin? It, does it start by the Nathans over there, by the hot dog? It starts by 21st Street. It used to start by the Cyclone, which well, that was the staging area, by the Cyclone. They changed that, oh, about 10 or 12 years ago, where the staging area is 21st Street. And that's where, it's, that's where the parade starts, around the 21st Street, goes down, down, down to the Cyclone, and then up to the boardwalk, and then into the beach, and into the water. Oh, OK. That's interesting. I didn't realize it ended at the. Wow. Okay. Into the water. Oh yeah. After it's they all jump in the water. Oh, oh man. Did anybody get one of those shots? No. <laughs> oh I, Jesus. I, I'm so exhausted. I never stick around for that. <laughs> well, maybe next time I'll go only for that yeah, shot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is a, a one I did with the uh, Evo, the VR 180, and in this case, I just went with the original fisheye framing. This is what the basically the raw image the camera puts out before it has any processing. Uh, it's a circular fisheye shot. But yeah, these costumes, you know, you just see people who do this amazing work and, and they're, you know, there's no, no commercial costumes. It's all stuff people have come up with themselves. And there's just, there's always fascinating, creative stuff people come up with. Do you recall what year this was? Oh, it this wasn't raining. That's all for sure. my stuff was the last year because I, I just put a couple oh. of 180 things I did last year. So gotcha. gotcha. And which camera was this? The, the Insta360 Evo. Oh, it, okay. It's a, you know, it's a little, little camera. It can do 360 mono or you fold it out and you do VR 180 uh, 3D. Speaking of the creative costumes, this is yours, Jay, I think. Yeah, I think she actually won an award for this. And I really like getting the wonder wheel in the background, it really sets the environment. You're, you're, just so you know, your audio is breaking up a bit. Oh yeah, I, I see, you're, 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 you got some kind of internet woes. That's all right, I, I, we hear you, we hear you. Um, I'm almost it's thinking how well Zoom does with video and they can't handle audio. So I the wall. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It it would almost pay to have him call in, but I guess we'll just keep moving. Um, yeah. All right, all right. I can explain every one of his pictures. <laughs> it took me, oh, you know, boy. this is the first time I, I finally got the gist of this. Alfred Hitchcock, got it. I would think, anyway. Um, or am I right or wrong? Yes. Yeah. Yes, it it's not. Really the yes. Stage? Is this before the parade started? This is afterwards. Oh, afterwards. Yeah, you can also get yeah. some good stuff after. People just kind of hang out for mill around. And when the sun is setting, we get some great light on the boardwalk. Your audio improved, by the way. Okay, this is Sheldon. That's mine again. Another one of just an interesting participant. I mean, I've taken thousands of pictures. This is just one after the other, wherever you turn is one is more interesting than the other. So I just found this costume interesting and shot the picture. Yeah, that's a shame that they that this year, well, I guess maybe they'll, they'll do it along the way. They're doing something tonight. If anybody wants to go on to the, just yeah, Google that, Coney Island Mermaid Parade. They're, they're, they're announcing something 8 o'clock tonight, I know. Yeah, this is, this is mine. This was uh, shot on the same day. This is in 2016. Uh, after, the, after, the, after the deluge. So then after the parade runs, I guess they, everybody, well, not everybody. Yeah, you're telling me they all just jump in the, in well, the Atlantic? From, from Surf Avenue to the street with the cyclone, to the boardwalk, to the beach, and jump in the water. And then at night, there's a big party. There's a big uh, event in the evening. So they move out all the, all, the, all the barriers then, right? It's so a they, whole day affair. Yeah, they have something like a mermaid ball. Yeah, the mermaid ball at night, right. I mean, I, I've never stayed for any of that. It's always about five hours of this. I, I'm usually home and cooling off by the time the, the parade has started. Cause the, the, yeah, if you don't, the whole thing, it's like you get there at eight or nine in the morning and you don't get out to like midnight or one in the morning. So it's a long day. <laughs> Looks like somebody's looking yes. for trouble here. 
how, how did this guy sneak into that crowd? You see, there must be very lack security. Oh, uh, um, the queue, Jim, but it's not. Uh, is Carlton around? Oh, yeah. Well, it's Carlton. Even for our own protection, but yeah, that's Carlton. Well, obviously, it's, they need better security. Actually, the first fellow 3D photographer I ever ran into. Is that so? Wow. Wow. Yeah. Well, you ran, you ran into a good, friendly, nice one, that's for sure. Not like the rest of us, we're all grumpy. And here's just another one of my fisheye format uh, VR-180 shots. And you can see these, uh, Dave uh, was nice enough to put these up on uh, his website. If you have a, a phone with a cardboard viewer or you have a VR headset, you can actually see these. It's a much different experience to see them in VR-180 and virtual reality headset. You really are seeing not these distorted angles, but you're sort of seeing the view as it looked to my eyes. But it's kind of fun being able to get both. There, there's a lot to this uh, fisheye immersive effect. Okay, this is Sheldon. This is another one of mine. And uh, I know a woman with fingernails like that, actually. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I just found out. I thought it would be an interesting through the window effect. So with the Fuji, I focused on the face and her hand comes through the window. And I just, that's in the staging area. And I just found that. Yes, yeah, it's, it's coming off the screen. Yeah, it's coming right the end of it, I tried to uh, it, it highlight that because it's, it's so effective. Yeah, you gotta you gotta focus on the face, otherwise the hand will be back on the screen. So. Oh, that's good. Look at you telling everybody what to do. That's good. <laughs> good thinking. Good thinking. Now that's a uh, definitely the, the calamari. Yeah. I know. I know already who shot this one because I know his ca camera angle. Yeah, that's me. That's Bruce. Uh, again, in 2016, in front of Nathan's. That's my spot. Yeah. Although the street looks dry. Uh, yeah, well, it probably, it, about a, uh, 40 minutes, it probably elapsed since things stopped. 40 minutes or an hour at this point into the parade. So, uh, had a little time for things to dry up. Now, how are the crowds in terms of sociability? How, you know, how, how, how sociable are the crowds? Uh, people were very nice. Of course, we had this big umbrella, and we allowed other people to uh, to uh, take shelter under it with us. So uh, I guess uh, that 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 forced them to be maybe even friendlier than they otherwise might have been. But uh, yeah, yeah well, I, I would I would also nice turn around to steal the light uh, medium format viewer because I'd have the TL120, this massive camera, and had a lot of fun passing you know the slide around. Uh, People really got a kick out of seeing a 3D meeting format slide. I'd always have a slide of a previous year's parade, and uh, that's kind of half the fun. That was it's a nice funny. concept, Jay. Oh, that's Thank cool. you. That's Jay, John. Yeah, I always try to get the who to who uh, people with the Wonder Wheel. Um, and this I'm using a fill flash, uh, using an optical fiber from the Fuji flash to trigger an external flash. And where and where were you holding the is it where is the external flash? The oh, words, bracket, so it's like eighteen uh, inches away. Yeah, the line is awesome here. The whole uh, up or sideways? Out of curiosity. Uh, where eighteen diagonal, inches? Yeah, like oh, okay, six or eight inches to the left and a foot or so up. And everyone, now obviously, this is not the staging area. This is someone just walking by, and you po you posed her, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, just people walking by after the parade. Usually you'd spend a few hours just going back and forth on the boardwalk. <clears throat> and yeah, the sunset helps too. And that's you, Sheldon, I believe, right? That's, is that mine? Yeah, I think so. Uh, I'll take that for it. It's a nice shot. I don't remember it being mine. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry if I'm wrong. <laughs> Anyone else take credit for it? I mean, oh boy, maybe it is mine. I don't know. <laughs> ah, look at that. Well, good. Okay, well, that's mine. I guess. No one else is taking it. <laughs> you can actually, I think you can see the tents where they take your money. Oh, yeah, it is. That's the staging area. That's one of the tents. Yeah. And now the people who end up in the staging area, they're just getting prepared. So, in other words, do they, do they pay to get into the parade? What, what? Who? Just so the, the pe people who? Yeah, the, 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 the people who were dressed up. No, 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 no. They're just part of the parade. They oh. just—they're allowed to come either to the staging area or just come and enter the parade as the parade starts. Uh, they said about a, about 150 to 200 out of the 
1,500 participants come to the staging area either dressed already or uh, partially dressed and they get fully ready in the staging area. And then they pose with you and for you and talk to you and all kinds of stuff. What kind of accommodations are there for the people to get changed? There's like a... Oh, there that a... okay. No, right in the street, right in front right of you. Right in the streets. It's, it's, it's Coney Island. Oh, my God. Topless, bottomless. Oh, they don't care. They're just like... Uh, they get changed right in front of you, right in the street. Festival. I got it. Yeah, Good. They, don't need, they don't need private areas. Nah, they're, who... They're, who's... they're exhibitionists, a lot of them. And, uh, you know, they just do it for the fun. And that's why it's so great. <laughs> yeah, well... I, I... Okay. Uh, if this is mine, um, this was the year the judging area was by the cyclone, and yeah, you know, it might have been used in a small park. Uh, oh, the other side of the cyclone. Uh, again, do you? Do you uh, I, I don't know if you just said uh, it broke up a little bit. Do you know what what year this might have been? Um, That's maybe twenty sixteen. Okay. okay. Seems like only uh, yesterday. Look like it was raining there. 2016 is my year. Ah. Okay. Oh, then maybe like 2013. Yeah. This is mine. Uh, of course, we have the, the Chihuahua, Chihuahua in costume and the owner as well. And, uh, well. And, and what are you shooting with, by the way? Uh, oh, I'm, 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 I'm shooting with a Fuji W3. Okay. The old trusty point and shoot camera. Did you did you zoom in a crop or something here? Um, I can't I can't be sure whether I cropped or not. But it looks like it zoomed slightly. Yeah, because it does look Pretty like tight. Yeah. yeah, but but it looks but it looks fine. I mean. Yep. Oh, yeah. This is mine on Boardwalk, um, towards the end of the parade. And that's towards the end, you say? Yeah, yes. Uh, it's near where the parade ends. Uh, Are there? I mean, so, okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, not much else to say about this. No, it's. Just, yeah. I, I was just going to say, do do, get, do people win awards or prizes for having uh, most outlandish or something or the coolest? Let's call it that. This one's pretty damn cool. There's a few different categories. Doesn't stand with. Uh, maybe, I don't know, 10 or 12 judges. I don't know how many. And yeah, people win first prize, second prize, third prize, fourth prize, etc. cetera. Mm -hmm. uh, this is one of mine, I believe. Is that correct? No one else takes credit. I <laughs> take so many. Yeah. No, no. I like that. No, good, good. Uh, that's yes. Yeah, that's why I just, again, I like to take a picture of the photographer taking a picture of the subject. I find yeah. that very interesting. And yes. sometimes you just see 20 or 30 or 40 photographers around the subject. Other time, just one or two. So I just thought it was an interesting composition to show the photographer photographing the, the participants. Yeah, I like those myself because it really does direct your. You, you get a free ride to the attention, the, yeah. the the moment of the shot. You know, because everybody's pointing, your eyes tend to do the same thing. And uh, but they're <laughs> often difficult because you got people in your way, right? In three D, that's well, a little. Yeah, but there's plenty of room to maneuver and get a good shot. Well, you're a violent guy anyway. Just push back. <laughs> But she was a very creative. Uh, yeah, it was beautiful. Man, you it was great. can get other photographers in your images, though. That's that's almost unavoidable. Who is this? Yeah, well, yeah. that's got to be Bruce. All one seventy one. Yeah, I think I'll take it. Yeah, I think I'll take it. I believe it's mine. Uh, <laughs> and uh, we've got Nathan's in the background, of course. Same same, same uh, vantage point. Uh, I didn't really notice this this. This person behind there, pushing, <laughs> pushing the gallon violet, but uh, it's uh, no. you see there's a slight bit of water on the ground, but things are pretty much dried out at that point. No, I, I guess there are vendors along the side, other than the, the actual places you can eat at Coney Island. No, or, there's it, no vendors no. in the parade route. No, no vendors. No. Yeah, that no. would be too messy. I mean, it's so crowded. You can't imagine how crowded and intense this is. You, you really. You might have some of, bottles of water, but what kind of crowd? Uh, there's actually Jay has a picture coming up later where you'll get a sense of the kind of crowds. I mean, it's it's amazing. <laughs> it's was it made up of kids? I guess is it you know cross section oh. children to grown ups and what? Oh, like, you, everyone from three years old to ninety. Bring your entire family. <laughs> <laughs> 
this this one's mine again from uh, you'll notice you'll notice a familiarity the background uh, yep yep this is my shot full frame gotcha yeah okay so this is mine and i use a camera uh, you're breaking up a bit again just so if you go if you, yep. do you have my video yeah, I got you your video, no problem at all. Just it's your audio. It's, it's a really great device you came up with. If you, maybe if you kill your camera, that might even, I don't know if that's going to help the bandwidth or anything. I, I don't know if that will help. But oh, okay. You never can oh. tell. Okay. Uh, I'll Better. post on the Gordon Gate website pictures of my camera rig. Um, it's using a painter's board that extends so I could get about 15 feet of height. And most of the time, I'm just guessing at where I'm aiming. After a while, you can get an educated guess on that, I'm sure. You did a good job. It's a nice shot. Yep. And by the way, your audio improved. It killed my camera. Yep, that, that's, it, it completely improved you. It sounds great. Is this you, Jay, or Jim? This is one of mine. This is, you can kind of see it's that wide angle thing again. Uh, this is the, with the Evo. And I took the rectilinear uh, image and just kind of stretched it out a bit. Uh, but you can see this is a, it's not, I'm not showing the full 180 view of it. I have a video, I posted links in the chat. I actually have a video of this drone core doing their thing in VR 180. Uh, it's, and you can see I'm also using a pole, just Insta360 cells, a very nice long extension uh, telescoping selfie stick. And so I was able to get some nice views uh, holding it above. And with that camera, it's nice. It has a smartphone app. So I'm able to preview the screen as I'm shooting. So I got a lot of nice elevated views with that camera. Now, where, where, where I'm trying to figure this out in terms of, what are they coming out of that place back there or just turning or starting? Yeah, or what? Close to the beach. This is the staging. This is them ah. running, kind of rehearsing before the parade, kind of running their thing. You see these photographers crawling all over the place. So this is staging area, right? You say? I think so, yeah. This is before the parade actually started. Because I went to the parade. Here's Josh. Thanks. Nice hat. Uh, yeah, this is one of mine again. And... Uh, they come in all levels of dress, some uh, completely topless, some fully dressed, and everything goes. And, uh, you know, pretty woman with a nice hat and uh, not too creative in the costuming, but, uh, you know, interesting, nice shot. <laughs> yeah, right. Staging area again. Yeah. And it's a staging area. So it's a pretty wide area because, like, you know. Well, it, it goes, yeah, it's pretty wide. It's on, the, it's on a street, and then it goes to the right and around. and yeah, Wow. Pretty large area of staging, yeah. And mostly photographers, obviously, right? Because who else would pay to get in? Well, again, if press pass is free, about 200, 150 to 200 photographers pay to get in. And, uh, you know, yeah. So it's it crowded, like but no problem getting into this. That it really is fun to just go and look at everyone's camera. You see all kinds of stuff. Here's a picture that shows you what the crowds are like. Now you see why there's not any vendors going around with hot dogs. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Man, I guess you know, everyone who's who's uh, who's with us today is very lucky because you'd never get the seats these guys got. You never get the shots that they got. Wow. I guess you got to get there pretty early in the morning to get close to the to the action, yeah. right? Well, yeah. the staging area opens at nine or ten, and the parade starts at one. So you got two choices: you're either in the staging area to get those shots, or do your best at the parade, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then again, they back to the boardwalk, the beach, the water, the ball. You know, there's plenty of opportunity whenever you get there. Um, who is this? That's mine. Kind of Bruce, right? Okay. This is mine. It's kind of like a familiar vantage point. No, you didn't. Exuberant you, you, lady in the front row. Yeah, that was smart. You you had the spot, man. You were getting the shots. I mean, that was it. Good good group. Yeah. That's uh, not another one of mine and using the external flash for fill night. Ah. And very nicely posed for a lot of pictures. This is near the end of the parade. Now, when you use the fill light, how are you? Oh, I see what you're doing. You're always leaving the flash on, right? Yes. And, and the, what, what are your settings on the count on the W3 itself? Do you go to a, a low ASA or? Yeah, low SA and manual exposure and take a couple of shots so I could get the light balanced. 
um, I can address the fast manual setting. Do you have any preference in terms of photometry? Like what, what meter that the camera is using? Uh, I'm, just, I'm just going by eye. Go by eye. Oh, because you're doing manual, right? So you're not worrying yes. about that. Yeah, okay, got yeah. it. Do you ever use the, uh, the internal uh, uh, metering? Uh, I keep on spot. Yeah, okay, spot, makes sense, yeah. yep, yep. Okay, yeah. Uh, again, this is, this is another one of mine. You'll notice a familiarity to the background as usual. Uh, good action shot though. It's a it's good composition, I think. One, yeah. of, one of the better ones that's been that's it's come. Yeah, this image a is line. Yeah. They're coming at you. Yeah. yeah. Great, uh, great shot for 3D, isn't it? I'm... Yeah, it really worked. came out well. Uh, this is one of mine again. She's uh, one of the fully topless uh, participants. And again, not as creative as other people in the costuming, but quite interesting. She's sitting, she's taking the lazy route, sitting on a car. <laughs> Right. Uh, there are also cars. There's a car parade. So some of the participants are in or on the cars or driving the cars. And the cars are quite interesting in themselves. Very antique cars and homemade cars and all kind of stuff. So she's just sitting on the hood of the car. Yeah, this car has a great hood. Driving down, driving down Surf Avenue. Well, I would say that the uh, the hood emblem on a, uh, on a Rolls Royce has a little bit. <laughs> has made, yeah, that's like... It, it, it's the hood ornament off, off the Etzel, which is yeah. I bought the car. Look at the end. Look at the emblem. It came I, that's it. I... <laughs> nice shot, though. Oh, there's the balloon again. Is that you, Jay? That's mine. Also with the car, so I was able to get, you know, straight on perspective to the balloon. And this is the stage and area. Still, okay. Um, how high can you raise the camera with that that bar of yours? About fifteen feet. It's amazing. In tell, you were talking about this the other day. What's your solution to, you, you, to monitor what you're taking? Are you just having to make your best guess? Most of the time guessing, but I have rigged up a little camera mm -hmm. and uh, no cheap uh, backup monitor. Yeah. All right, this is another one of my images. This car, does anyone know what this car is? Is it a homemade car? Is it? A, oh, yeah, some of that's custom, a custom made. It's a custom, sure. Custom made, but I just found it was beautiful purple. And uh, this guy was just driving it down uh, as a, just as a car. No participants, no mermaids, but just as a really, really interesting, fun car driving down Surf Avenue. It's a great yeah. color too. I got to thank the guy for that. Great, great color shot. Great, except it, I think it's a, uh, at this point, it looks like this might have been the day it rained. So that might be just a moving bathtub. He's sorry he didn't have a cover, I'm thinking. Uh, I think it may have rained a little that day it went. Yeah, 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 yeah. It looks great, though. My God, could be, could be 2016. Yeah, maybe. And uh, here's one, here's another one of mine again. Uh, the uh, the vantage point is terrific. The positioning is wonderful. I have no complaints. I can't imagine I'll ever be so fortunate again. But now, now move it. Obviously, people frown upon moving through that crowd, right? I mean, it, 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 is it difficult to get to, I mean, you have to hold your own and that's because I know when you left, that was going to be the end. If you, if you had a, you know, if you had a, a, a hankering for a hot dog, you probably would not got back to that spot, right? Unless you yeah. left your girlfriend. It's very well controlled. There's police everywhere. It's yeah, just police. crossing the street is an hour long project, but you don't want to cross the street. If you have this to look at, why do you want to cross the street? Yeah, good point. Well, you, right. You can, right. now how long does it take for this whole parade to go by? Oh, I don't know, boy. about an hour and a half. An hour and a half, okay. Yeah. But you killed the whole day there. <laughs> the parade is just a small part of what's going on. But, but none of you guys hung around to watch it, watch it all wash off in the ocean. That's interesting. Oh. You got, I guess you got to stay late for that. Does that happen at the end? I mean, how, how, what, Sheldon, people are walking around soaked for the rest of the night. That would seem... You mean when it rained that day? No, I'm talking about going into the ocean. The mermaids. Oh, you know what? I never, I, I never stayed for that. So ah. I don't know. I guess if you go, you can dry off pretty quickly. Yeah, yeah I guess so. I would it's guess. Not that many participants go into the ocean. It's more um, the king and queen and Dick and ah. maybe 50 other people go in. There's a cross ceremony at the end. At what time of that a day is that? That's at the end of the parade, after the last participant has come by. 
So like three or four o'clock then, right? Because it begins at one. You said an hour and a half. Like yeah, hour. yeah. Okay, interesting. Yeah. They're doing sort of a mock ice capades there. That's what the skates are for. Right? Someone's asking there. They're kind of, it's almost like they're doing the ice capades on that on that floor. Yeah. Oh, again, Phil Crash. This was when I first got out the train station. That's great. You got a great taste in unicorns. <laughs> Is that Nathan's again? Now this is this is not staging yeah. area. This is is this staging area? No, no. no yeah, uh, Nathan's is, is in the heart of the matter. Yeah. It, it, I, I didn't hear that answer. It, oh well, the staging area is oh, it, the the past couple of years has been over uh, on Surf Avenue around Twenty First or Twenty Second Street, way away from, you know, where all the Nathan's and all that stuff is. Nathan's is really the heart of the parade. Well, if anybody doesn't know, obviously many people won't know Coney Island. The the, the water is. On the other side of that Nathan's, like if you go down that block, that's where the uh, that's where the beach is, right? Yes. So you got that, and then and then Surf Avenue is the last avenue before you hit the hit the hit the Atlantic. It's parallel to the boardwalk, right? Yeah. And uh, here, here's another one of my uh, 180 shots. I went for the fish eye, uh, and this is that same drum core. I do have uh, this video up on YouTube if anyone's. It really is fun to see these if you have any way to view uh, VR immersive videos. And I, I, one thing I like about this shot is you're looking down and you can just see the hordes of photographers all, all catching. Yeah, I'll, they had this nice pole my Evo was on floating way above them, but you kind of see them all crawling around down there. This is you, okay, Sheldon. This is one of mine. Uh, this is a group. Uh, some participants just come by themselves or with two people. Then there's groups of 40 or 50 people. This is a group of... Uh, dancers and Hispanic dancers from you are about 50, 50 women in the group with flowing skirts. There's another picture you'll see soon of the same thing, but they're very talented. The choreography was just amazing. With uh, Can we go back to that a second? The, that, yeah, the choreography and the way they moved and the flowing skirts is just, just amazing. And I needed a fast shutter speed to capture it, but uh, I took maybe 30 or 40 images of, this, of them dancing like this, and you'll see another one a little later. And was this staging area, too, or would you find a no, place? This was the actual parade. Okay, gotcha. We were walking down, about 50 of them walking down the parade, and choreography, yeah. Another shot with the camera call. Uh, this is actually right near the cyclone. So it's a good spot because people tend to turn. Yeah, it just gives you a sense of the the very elaborate floats. And these are just people who are just making these as kind of a, for the hell of it. But you get some amazing floats people put together. Yeah. There are a few commercial floats which uh, they pay the parade for sponsorship. Oh, sure, sure. Yeah. This is, I think this is your and, thing. And this is also mine, uh, again, with a Phil Flash. Um, oh, you, you got the Phil Flash on this one. Yes. Oh, yeah. You have no, yeah. no detail on his face, otherwise it's a great shot. And that Phil Flash, it's, where do you usually keep it on the camera? To the right or the left? Uh, to the left. To the left, okay. Yeah. That's interesting. Because the sun so, kind of came from that angle too, so it, 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 you really don't even know that there was a flash. That was like, Other than a couple of things twinkling on yeah. the reflections of some of the jewelry. Well, you can again. Again, this is my vantage point. We've got yeah, yeah. Uh, we got Batman and the ladies of the evening strolling down the street. It's a good group. How long did you stay there for that? For that, did you get? You didn't go, Bruce, to the uh, to the um, uh, staging area. Staging right? area. Thank you. I did not go. No, we didn't go to the staging area. You know, we got the spot. We we weren't going to move. When did uh, you give up? I mean, when the whole thing finishes, goes by. Yeah, when it all finished. Yeah, after the, the at the end, they bring the cars through, and um, after that was all over, we were all starved, and we went over, went, went across the way, and uh, got online and ate like kings. Ah, you see, okay. or King, in Kings County, thing? I should say, yeah, yeah right. Right. not like kings, kings, but in kings County. Uh, this one's probably twenty eleven. One of the first times I've shot with the hammer ball. Uh, you know, it's just great being able to look down on the people like this. And of course, start going yeah. in the background. You do have some audio woes again, just to let you know. There's that, there's that, uh, that dance group. 
There's another one of these, uh, this group nice uh, with the flowing skirts uh, spinning around. And I mean, to see it, to see like a group of 50 people dancing like this, all super choreographed. Is just, That's a great shot, pal. Thank you. I it's like just it. amazing. That's very great. beautiful. These people, these women are very talented. And uh, regarding the question about taking the subway or parking, if you get there at nine o'clock or so for the staging area, there's plenty of parking on all the side streets and everything within a five or 10 minute walk. So, uh, but the subway is great also. It leaves you off right there. So either way, but you got to get there early after 10 o'clock or so. You can't oh, I like this. This is from the concert to support the Kickstarter uh, after Hurricane Sandy. It's Amanda Palmer. And again, I used the camera call so I could see down onto the stage. Oh. So that that guy on the left uh, with the the horse head, like that year I was down there, my pictures were, were bad on the one side, so they didn't turn out, but he wasn't wearing the horse mask, so it was way out of context. I'm like, why is there a dude wandering around with a diaper on? It's pretty strange. <laughs> yeah. It, 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 it must be. Now, people are people dressed in the crowd who are not part of the parade, or are they... Or, you know, or people just hanging? I would, say, I would say rarely. I haven't noticed anyone in the crowd that's dressed up, but maybe there are some. I don't know. That's funny. You'll have people who've already marched, or you, you end up seeing, that's one of the fun things there is as the parade's going on, you can get lots of shots of people in nice costumes who maybe they've already marched or they're not on for a while. You'll have people all over the place. It, it really is. You just go there with your camera, and you're going to get stuff. And the end here. Uh, the end is nigh. Now, I guess that's tell uh, why. I, does anybody know why it's the end? Or uh, we know why it's the end now, fellas. But huh. yeah, I can't uh, read what he. I mean, if, you ha you'd have to talk to him to find out what he's what he means by this. <laughs> no, it's the official end. He's the last one to march. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, he's the last guy. Yes. Oh, that's why you put him at the end. And there's oh, always a king. Bruce, I wouldn't have figured that out. Anyway. There's always a king and queen of the parade. You get a, a man and a woman, two famous people, actors or uh, politicians or someone uh, that's famous. They they start the parade and they're called the king and queen of the parade. You know, I looked on the site and it did say uh, Arlo Guthrie for one of these last years. You know, so yeah, 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 it's very. If anybody who knows who Arlo Guthrie is. So for anyone who hasn't been to the Mermaid Parade, I suggest make a little vacation in New York City next June and make this uh, the feature of your vacation, you'll remember it the rest of your life. Vaccine, oh. vaccine permitting. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, uh, don't forget to go on the Cyclone and the Wonder Wheel, two rides from the early 1920s that'll, uh, you know, you'll remember that also. <laughs> yeah, that, well, I hope you enjoyed that uh, a great parade and your, your chance to enjoy it without having to go out. Hold on a second. Ah, there we go. You just love that Coney Island crowd. I wish I had a Coney Island hot dog right now. But anyway. <laughs>